Okay. Oops. Let me get back to. There we go. Um, all right. So welcome to 5.1. Um, it's probably going to take for the students who don't know me. Don't know me. It's going to take a little while for you to get used to my style of video lecture. Um, so I'll kind of preface it by saying. Um, I am going to start the semester talking more English uh, and gradually work into more and more sign. Um, we will be in class doing a lot more sign heavy work than talking. Um, but I do think it, it, there are things that can be explained better in English quickly, making reference to what you already know in English from another spoken language. Um, so this isn't going to be what some teachers will call immersion. Um, so I'm going to go through and highlight the things that I, you need to pay attention to as you're looking at the materials with Trueway online. Um, I won't be teaching every vocab word um, because the, all of that is in Trueway and you can take it at your own time. Um, there are also variations on different signs. So I could teach each of those variations, but then this video would be super, super long and you already have those uh, in there. I will, in these, teach the basic ones, the ones that I tend to use the most often. Um, and I've got sponges on my glasses. So I will teach the most common usages, and I may refer to things slightly different than they do in the true way materials, either because I learned it differently, or because I think there may be better ways to um, understand things. Um, that I, <clears throat> basically in your same position, that's how I learned it. So what helped me? Um, that way, at least, if there's any difference between what I present and what Trueway presents, they should be consistent, just usually looking at it from a slightly different point of view. So take whichever way makes sense to you, um, and it helps be familiar. So we're going to look at calendar and time expressions this chapter. I'll also be recording 5.2 events. Um, I'm not going to go through, um, I'll talk about events, but I'm, with each chapter, I'm not going to go through every single like holiday and things. Uh, I will try to find pre-recorded vocab lists that other teachers have shared. Um, we tend to share stuff like this all the time. Um, if someone's already recorded it, why should I record it again? It's also good to watch someone else sign and because as you notice with True ASL, there's a whole bunch of different signing styles in their videos. Uh, so the snapshots, you know, every chapter's got a rationale where they kind of explain what the chapter's about, and then each of the different snapshots. Now, Ayeth and Two Degrees of Separation are both uh, deaf culture references and information. All the other ones have to do with um, sign and vocab and the concepts. So I'm going to kind of work my way through the PowerPoint for the chapter, and then I'm going to make reference to the rationale video and other snapshots as they sort of apply. So the first one um, in the rationale, time, obviously, point to your watch, right? Time. Um, and then they're going to use this, a four, a four and a five or a four and a four or a four and a flat hand. This is the key hand. It is four, which means it is ordered and regular. Five tends to be um, more chaotic or unordered, disordered. For example, a paper has is just a piece of paper. It is a thing, right? But a schedule is a grid of lines. If we talk about uh, later, when we talk about using our hands like this, of lots of people moving in a group, like, uh, people at a, um, a club dancing or walking around a festival. There's no order. People are just wandering around. Where if we do this, it means ordered groups. We use this for a mainstream classroom. Um, uh, we'll use this for a parade. People lined up, people lined up like this. So four tends to be ordered, five tends to be less ordered, if that makes sense. So when you see this, they're drawing a four by four grid. Right. So you're drawing a grid, a graph, a schedule, a calendar. Okay. Um, you'll also notice 
that these signs will often get paired with similar signs like time schedule, right? Calendar, grid. They'll add signs like that to sort of tweak the meaning and give it a little bit more specificity. You'll start to notice that. Um, pay attention to how those signs interact because that's how we build our sentences. Calendar. Um, I will often also reference one-handed signs versus two-handed signs. This is more formal and more complete. If you're holding something and you don't have that second hand, you could do, but that's confusing, right? So I'll oftentimes show one-handed versions of signs as well. Um, month. So the sign for month is this, back of hand to back of hand and draw it down. If you turn this hand so it's both back of hand is forward, you're going to run into your knuckles. So you want to turn it like this, you can move smoothly down to the wrist, right? So month. I always thought about it as you turn the page of like a monthly calendar, month, month, month. Uh, things that are monthly, rent, you pay rent monthly, right? So we also, if you imagine that this is uh, a thermometer and the line of mercury goes up and down, temperature. So those are similar signs. Uh, rent makes sense because you have to pay it monthly. So, oh, have rent. Um, so that's the sign for month. When we fingerspell, when we say what January, February, blah, 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 uh, they're all basically three or four letter abbreviations, except for from March to July, where we fingerspell the whole thing. So January, J-A-N, February, March, M-A-R-C-H. And if you remember from ASL 1, I talked about lexicalized fingerspelling, and we saw with truck uh, and a few other words, bank, um, that the fingerspelling becomes the sign. So this is another case where January, J-A-N, the best way to get to fluency in these is just fingerspell them clearly, clearly and smoothly without having to like bounce or J, a n j a n find the most efficient way jan jan notice how the a is sideways because it's the end of the j a and then we move into the n so um if you do a simple search on youtube for asl months you will see many different people signing these um so january february March, April. April actually has an interesting little twist. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Um, you'll notice a pattern with most of these lexicalized uh, finger spelling words is that there's a shape a flow, they tend to flow and stop. There's, there's, um, there's a pattern. Um, there's some variations in those patterns, but that's what you're working towards is to get that pattern. So Jan, it's almost like toss, catch, Jan, February. You take the F, you like almost pinch something, pull it back and then shoot it out. Feb. December, same pattern. March, M-A-R-C-H. Now, April, there's two different ways people tend to do it. And it's one is a circle where they go April. So down to the outside to the R-I-L. Or a April, a drop down to the inside R-I-L. So one goes outside, one goes inside. Um, again, I will recommend for right now, just practice finger spelling them so that you can go April and don't have to go A P R I L. Um, it's the best with anything common finger spelled, you're going to want to do that. Um, so those are the months and day. I probably in ASL one, you learned this for a day because We've used it in other situations, but day. Um, 
we're going to now notice with day, like we did with week, and I'm about to teach it, but I taught it in ASL one as well. Week. Notice the hand shape is a one. That's going to become important. Many time signs use the base hand shape as one because then we can change it to other numbers. Um, and again, I talked about this in ASL one, but in case your teacher didn't, I'm going to set it up as if I'm teaching it for the first time. So day the 11th, right? Um, now, Sunday, Sunday, most of the time I see it up, down, Sunday. Um, and it usually, as you've noticed with the history of ASL, um, it comes from uh, mostly churches. So Sunday was the day of praise and whatever. So, so this is the sign for Sunday. And there's a squirrel leaping across my, my snow-covered patio. Um, Monday. Now I'm going to teach the more formal, old-fashioned way. And I'll explain at the end of it where there's a difference. So Monday. Just get the letter M and draw a nice slow circle. Monday. And we're going to keep going. Tuesday. Wednesday. TH. And then let the H do the circle. Friday. Again, palm out Friday. Saturday. Okay. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now, there, that is the more old-fashioned, formal way of doing it. It's also um, a lot of ASL stage performers and lecturers will sign it that way because it's clear. You're seeing the letter M. More casual, relaxed conversation, you'll see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, well, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. See, palm back towards me. Um, the confusion is, and you'll see, M, W, and F, all are three fingers up, right? So they're really easily confused. Remember, uh, nine, six, and three are really easy to get confused. So um, I'm gonna recommend doing Monday, make sure it's an M, Wednesday, and Friday. Make sure that people can see the letter. Then once you get more confident, more casual in a person who knows you that you're signing with, then you can Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, Monday and Wednesday, see how confusing those two can be? Wednesday, Friday, Wednesday, Friday. If someone's not used to catching hand shapes quickly, that can be confusing. And Monday, Saturday, they're easily confused. That's why I recommend doing this, um, especially for what we're doing. You're going to get used to catching finger spelling, hand shapes in signs. Um, it just comes with time and you have to keep practicing. All right, so week, week. Mm -hmm. So here's the calendar. Here are the four weeks, right? One of them, All right? And weekend or weekend. This is the sign for end, right? There's the end. So you'll see different variations, weekend, weekend. Um, you can see the handprint in the, in the back of the picture. Since there are usually four weeks in a month, well, <laughs> there are five in here, but um, you can say first week, second week, third week, fourth week. And notice something first, second, third, fourth. That's how we get the TH, right? First, SD, second, right? So first, second, third, fourth. So you can just use in the one conversation, the poker game, conversation starter, they're talking about which week do we want to do this? And they're trying to decide which week to get together again for poker. Um, do, 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 do. Right. And we talked about this in ASL1, that the future, the future's in front of me, right? The past is behind me. And the now is right here with me, Boom. right? So that's how we're going to always treat time in ASL. Um, before I get to these non-manual markers, I want to look at this. So it can go way far back, way far in the future, be in the middle range, 
in the middle range or really close, really close. So that facial expression is going to change based on if it's small, medium, or large. And the way I normally refer to them is like ooh, ooh, or um, for really close. Uh, they refer to it as a, a CS. If you see on the bottom, it says CS. Um, like something right here, like something really close, right over there, just around the corner, um, or just just past. If you take, we know the sign for past is this, right? This is the generic sign for in the past. If you do it with rather than a full hand, you just use the index finger. Recent, recent past, right? Um, people will also do this for um, just past the tip of your nose, right in the future. Ooh, almost, almost. So see how it's that mousy face where everything's like lemony, um, like if tasted something really sour or bitter, right? So that is just now, yesterday, like, uh, like really tight on. Again, it's all relative. It's small, tiny. Just to the outside is the MM, the mmm. I call this the De Niro face. I think that's easier. It's reasonable. It's what you expect, right? Who are we talking about, right? So that is, yes, you know, last week, well, something like that. Not bad. It was just last week uh, or next week, two weeks, maybe a month later. Relatively speaking, it's nothing, right? So that's the MM. Then if something's in the future, it's a big mouth, uh, like a um, cha, as oftentimes, or ah, uh, ah, far in the future, far in the past, like when I was in college far past, right? Um, so that's why CS, small thing. If you order, you know, if you order a coffee and it comes like an espresso cup, you're like, no, I want that. Or you get the reasonable one. Like you order a large coffee and it comes back huge and you're like, awesome, yes, but I'm going to be caffeinated all day. If you order a large coffee and it comes back with this tiny little cup, you're like, what the hell is this? This is not enough. <laughs> Straw, all done, whatever. Um, if you get one, you're like, oh, that's a reasonable place. Yeah, it's okay. Right. So we use small, medium, large for almost anything to show whether it met our expectations, whether it exceeded them, or whether it fell short. Okay. So in this case, we're talking about time. So you'll be able to see in all the videos, watch their facial expressions when they sign something time-wise. Are they talking about it far in the future, far in the past, or pretty recent? So, okay, they just went through the mm -mm, the ah. Uh. All right, so now we come back to that one week, one hour, one day, one month, right? We're using that one handshake. We can incorporate any non-moving number into the sign by replacing that handshake. One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks. We only use the non-moving handshakes because if we were to do 11, let me show you 11 weeks if I were to follow this rule with 11. No longer is it something moving. It's now something repeating. This is almost like, you know, those those water fountain, those water shows where, you know, like that kind of thing. That's why the moving handshakes don't work. They have to be stationary. So we can go up to nine, nine weeks, nine months, nine hours, nine minutes. We can incorporate those. Those are pretty easy. Um, 10 and up, we have to separate them. 10 weeks, 11 weeks, okay? So we call it the rule of nine. There are some variations. Sometimes six, seven, eight, nine are confusing if we incorporate them. So sometimes we just go up to five and that's easier. And really one and two are the easiest um, for uh, yesterday, tomorrow, a day in the future, two days in the future, or in the past, we'll use one and two. So for right now, I just want to look at practicing with one through nine in minute, 
So one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Now, when we're recording a video, do something that Trueway doesn't do. Try to make sure that we can see what the number is. I know in Trueway, sometimes they sign like this to the side and it's impossible to see the handshake. Be better than Trueway. Okay. Um, so always make sure when you're recording on a video that we can see what the handshape is, nine minutes. Um, so we've got minute, hour, two hours, three hours. Um, day, boom. Sometimes you'll see day come upwards. I'll just say for right now, practice it. You know what? Practice it this way. One day, two days, three days. Because if you ever break it up and do three days, uh, or if you see it that way, so just three days, four days, five days, six days. And really six doesn't matter as long as we see that there are just the middle three fingers up. Okay. Um, week, two weeks, three weeks, month, four months, five months, six months. And take it slow. You don't have to do it fast. It's much better to be clear. Um, especially if you notice that your video camera is blurry or slow or something like that. Make sure you're signing for your recording. Okay. Um, and then year, right? It's the earth going around the sun. It's not the sun going around the earth. And if you show me the earth being flat going around, I'm just gonna give you a zero. So one orbit around the sun is year. Now there's a snapshot video where the guy talks about how people will sign gear like this rather than go around this fist. It's just a little less work. And if you notice, uh, languages evolve to be easier to do. It's the reason why we have contractions, right? We say can't when we don't want to say cannot, right? Um, so year or year, they're both the same sign. They take a little getting used to, especially because this one happens so quickly and so small. But in casual conversation, it will make sense. And again, there's a snapshot that we'll talk about that. All right, so we did day. Um, so now we're at yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So today, and you'll also see now day. Today, tonight, this afternoon, right? So we use now plus day, now plus night now plus afternoon, whatever. So today, this week, this weekend, um, we wouldn't say this Saturday. We might say this week, Saturday, right? If we say next week, Saturday, it can be confusing. Generally, we mean not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, right? Um, we kind of take it literally. So now yesterday, is going to be yesterday. Now, the old sign English way was with Y. If you do that, unlearn it. Tuck in that in that pinky, right? Yesterday, take the extended A, touch it to where your mustache meets beard. So here, and then go back to the ear. So it's almost like deaf, but with a different handshape. Yesterday, and if you go forward, it's tomorrow. Yesterday, tomorrow. Yesterday, tomorrow. Now we can change that to a two, two days ago. We don't use two days in the future tomorrow. <laughs> two, two days future. That's clear. Yes, two days ago, two days ago. And I've seen three days ago, but not very often. Two days past is the clearest way. But you will see this for two days ago. Um, it's not a huge one. Oh, my Dominion bill is due. This one. Anyway. Okay. Um, how do I get rid of this thing? This is such a pain. Okay. I can get rid of that there. Okay. Sure enough. So now we're incorporating amount of days, one to nine, right? The rule of nine. Two days past, three days past, two days ago. Yesterday is one day two days. Right? Um, one and two are the, are the ones we most often use. One day, two days, two days future, two days, two days duration from now on, two days. 
I think two days future, two days past, you can do that with any number. And, you know, again, watch the snapshot videos and in, in their conversations and you'll see examples of these. And in class, we're going to practice all, we can practice all this stuff. So week, last week, next week, two weeks ago, two weeks in the future, three weeks past, three weeks in the future. Okay. So what's nice is we can put future right into the sign and past right into the sign. Now, these are weird. These are weird to get used to. Nine weeks in the past, nine weeks in the future. Um, again, one through five really is clear. Five weeks in the future, five weeks in the past. Six weeks in the past is a little bit, there's a little bit more processing in the race. So that's a six to back. Okay. Um, so you can always separate them. That always works. Six weeks past. But you can incorporate six weeks past. There's a variation on next week where we've got one week future, two weeks future, three weeks future. Some people will do drop this down under one week future. Next week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. That kind of, it's a stylistic twist. It's a little bit more advanced. I would recommend just getting used to, to receiving it as opposed to producing it. Next week is much clearer than next week. It's not as glassy, but. Um, so last week, this week, this week, right? So now week and next week. Okay. So again, same things we did, incorporating the numbers one, so do, do, do one through nine month we're going to do the same thing one through nine you can incorporate past month or month past you can do it in either order month past i find month past is clearer than past month because this is a big generic open term this is very specific so if you start with specific it's clearer um and you can go nine months past, right? Um, future, future. Uh, this tends to be duration, like from now on for nine months, as opposed to in nine months. That makes sense. Year. Oh. Now we, I know we talked about it in ASL one for my classes. If you didn't in your classes, dates, years like that, 2017, do it as two pairs, 2017. And I tend to, I'm going to recommend doing the old school 10, 7, right? 10, 6, 10, 8, 10, 9. Very clear, much more clear than this or this. So just for, for getting used to it, getting back into things, um, 2017, 2017 or 2019, 2020. Okay. So if you, most ASL numbers, anything larger than, three digits, we're going to try to break it down into pairs because it's much easier to, it's much easier receptively. Definitely. Now here's one where we, six years, six years, we tend to do one through five. Five years is really easy. Once we get to six years, it's a little more confusing. So it's easier to separate. So you can always, with all these numbers, you can always separate the number, the numeral, and the amount of time, hour, week, day. You can always separate them, but you can replace the handshake with a number, usually one to nine, sometimes one to five. And again, we've got past for ago and future for from now. Um, so many years we use this for since or up to now because it goes from the past depending on it can be short for the last week or so 
or it could be like all my life. Uh, for hundreds of years, we've done this. So from the past to now, if the facial expression changes a reasonable amount of time, um, if you repeat years and from now on, all year, If you repeat it, it means years, years, years. If you do one for one long year, right? We're starting to see how if you manipulate the sign, you can add that kind of mean like, oh my God, it was like, I, I worked solid for one hour, but it felt like all day. Um, so if it looks like you're putting effort into producing the signs, it generally means that there was effort in going through that time period. Um, so now we're on the, uh, the twisting the numbers first, second, third, um, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. We've, I believe we did this in ASL one as well, but again, I don't know what your teacher covered. Um, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, it's horizontal first, second, third. We don't need the endings. We don't need RD, ST, all that stuff. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Um, I, most of the time I see it's one movement, 10th, 11th, 12th. See, you were starting out from 10, 12th, 12th, 12th. This is better. 12th, 13th, 13th. Well, watch the videos to see the variations. But when we do that twist on the side, that's how we know that it's not the number. It's a place. You know, I feel more comfortable. A little twist into 12, 13th, 14th. Because if you just twist four, it looks like fourth, right? So 14th. So that it's this that's important. That's also, you, when we, by the time we get to like 14th, 15th, we've already counted some bit for second, third, 15th. So you don't, not all the numbers lend themselves to that little twisting motion. So play um, and watch other people signing it. All right, so the conversation starters, remember, what did you do? And they also, when they're talking about the future, they tend to sign plan. What are you going to do? Right. So take a look at the conversations. Uh, I'm going to look to see what my notes were on these. I may pause uh, and do a couple different takes in the middle of this just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, snapshot one talks about the rule of nine and then also talks about sometimes we use five and sometimes we use two. Um, snapshot two, when he's talking about year versus year, he talks about formal and not formal, not formal. The, the signs go by pretty quickly, um, but by now you have a full, you have a solid foundation from ASL one. So hopefully you don't need to break down the snapshots. To uh, I will try to pick out the ones that are confusing or the things that I think are going to be confusing for you, uh, and I'll address them. There aren't that many uh, in five point one, which I'm thrilled about. Um, in conversation. Two, when Dwight and Ashley, uh, Dwight's filling out a piece, uh, a form of some kind. She's on her phone doing something. Um, it'll be really easy to miss what he fingerspells. Look at the question. What's the date? Then look at what he does. He fingerspelled date, date. If you're not ready for fingerspelling, it's going to shock the hell out of you. <laughs> You'll be like, what did he just do? He just did this. Blah, 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 blah. That's it. No, date, date. But because we know that's that sign for date, D-A-T-E, she sees it. He also repeats himself, date. What's today's date, I think is what he signs. So each of the conversations in these conversation starters seems to be pretty clear. I don't think there's that much that um, is going to take you by surprise. Uh, but we can also talk about it in class. If you've got specific questions, write it on the board. Uh, I'll make sure there's chalk in the tray. If there's not, let me know. 
um, write it on the board or come up to the whiteboard and write your questions so that I can address them. Um, I'd say email me, but I'm not going to always check my email right before class. So when you come in class, write down what you want to talk about so that I can say, okay, great, erase that, we can move on. Um, so those are the conversation starters. Now, I'm going to say this in here, and I, if I have to go and do it by hand, I will do it by hand. But um, my preference for all of the conversation starters is if it says, answer one of the questions, answer them all, address them all. You're good. If you can answer one, you can answer all of them. If you can only answer one, then you're really not getting anything from the video, right? So be able to answer them all. Um, or if there's one that you don't know, put a question in there. Those discussions are that we can give feedback to each other. It actually, once everybody adds into it, it's really hard for me to address any of the questions in there. But someone who's looking at it right after you did and has the same question, um, everybody can feed each other. Um, bum, bum, bum. Then conversation starters too. They talk about talking with their kids about what's yesterday, what's today. Yada, which month is your favorite? Okay. Um, which day, what's your favorite Saturday or Sunday? Okay. I don't know. I don't, there's no favorite day of the week. Once you, once you start doing like adulting, all the days blur together. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm getting old. Uh, conversation starters three. How long have you lived here? Long. So here, think about that going up the arm. Here's the scale, right? We do like, we'll use this for a scale of things improve, things get worse, um, long or slow. When we've asked for it, could you slow down? We sign this. So it looks like an L. Please don't make it an L. It's just the indicator. How long, how long have you lived, lived, lived here? Up to now? Um, how many more school years until you complete your degree? We're going into the future or into the future. Moon, Earth, and Sun. So moon, because we're talking about time references, these things can come up. So moon, think about the crescent, right? Moon, and put it up in the sky. Moon. Sun, you sort of point to it, draw it, sun, and then I, most of the time I see, so sun beams, right? Sunshine. So that's sun. And then Earth is this. And uh, in ASL, when I refer to, if you've got a globe, usually it's got that stand, right, with two pins, the North and South Pole, so it can spin. Boom. So that's what these things are. And you grab this fist, Earth. Uh, the story that they talk about uh, is part of deaf folklore, deaf literature, where it's called Ayeth. Earth, E-A-R-T-H, um, with deals with the ear and deaf people go, we're eye people. We're the people of the eye. We're not the people of the ear. That's hearing people. So there's like ieth. So same thing you did here, but you did, like, although this is the head, not the ear, earth, right? So ieth. And it's an interesting story. It's um, depending on the storyteller telling it, it's pretty interesting. Um, but she gives a, a summation in the one snapshot. Again, it's a deaf culture reference. Now we're getting into morning, sun coming up over the horizon, right? So morning, noon, the sun is above our head. Right? Boom. Then afternoon, it's past the noon, so it's starting to come back down. Evening is further down, and then night is down below. So you're tracking the sun. So morning, and you know, unfortunately, morning to noon, there's a huge jump. We have afternoon, evening, night. Night tends to be a little bit more, I don't want to say violent, but a little more sharp. It's down there. But we'll also see noon with a 12 and midnight with a 12. It's hard to sign midnight this way. You kind of have to drop it down and then we're not in your signing space. So midnight, most of the time I see midnight with 12. Boom, boom, boom. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, we saw that already. Um, so all day and all night, um, if we do here, so now we've gone, we're going to stay under the horizon and do a sweep with the five hand or with the, keep the fingers close all night, all day. 
all night, all day. It's a scoop. Shoop. Shoop. All day, all night, 24 seven. And we don't use last. This means final, final week, final. So from first, final. Okay. So when we're talking about last night, we mean past night. It's not last, past night, last name. That would be this, right? Um, last day of class, last week, final game, past game, the last game we played, last game night, right? Because it's not final. This would be final. So last night was my last night at work. So we've got one last night and one final night. So keep in mind, can you switch out last with final? That's the way you want to sign it. Okay, so more conversation starter questions. And so time or time, clock. Most of the time I see boom, boom. So here's the time, here's the clock on the wall clock, hour, minute and second are basically the same. Sometimes you'll see it up here. Sometimes you'll see it in the palm. There's different preferences. Minute tends to last longer than second. But, and that's the best advice I can give. You'll be able to tell in context what people are talking about. People don't usually talk about an hour and two seconds, It'd be an hour and two minutes or two minutes, two seconds. Right? Um, do, 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 do. Now, when we're talking about clock times, time of day, we're always going to touch our watch first so we know what the reference is going to be. So time three, time five, time 12. Right? We always want to do that. Um, you can incorporate three o'clock. If it's on the hour, three o'clock, boom, we three o'clock. Uh, and sometimes people do three, like they'll touch it with the fingertips, the thumb, whatever. You just know as you hit the wrist and come back up that that's three o'clock for on the hour. Um, again, we can or incorporate six minutes, right? Uh, so do, 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 do. let me look at this. So, oh, oh, sorry, this graphic is, it, it, interpreting this, some of their graphics is kind of weird. Um, five in the morning, because there are so few signs between like dawn and noon, we will use AM is morning. But you can say, oh, but crack at dawn, right? It's not even bright out versus... I slept in, the sun rose, and I was still in bed boom, till 11 o'clock in the morning, right? It's come up above the horizon versus I had to get up at five in the morning, time five in the morning, like boom, boom, boom. see how below the horizon I am, boom. Um, same thing, so you can go all the way up to here for 11 a.m., 11 in the morning, noon, one in the afternoon, four in the afternoon, six in the evening, eight in the evening, and uh, went to sleep at one o'clock, one o'clock at night. Boom, boom. I know one o'clock is still a court, uh, according to hearing culture, one o'clock in the morning. But if it's when you're going to bed, it's midnight. Right? So just think that idea that where in this scope is the time happening? Morning, 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 noon, afternoon, 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 afternoon evening, 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 night. Right. So whereabouts can you place that? So you can twist, you can change those signs to show early morning, late morning, early afternoon, late afternoon, early evening, late at night. 
hope that makes sense. Um, now, O. We will sign the O. Like when we were counting, time 505. We're, we're going to show the O. You're not going to do 55. Five. We need the O5 so that we know. So time 505. Time 505. Morning, afternoon, whatever you want. 11, 11. Time 11, 11. And I'm just doing a small move to the outside. So we know we're talking about two different uh, meanings. 12, 02. 12, back of hand, 02. 4 to 7. Remember we did that for all day, all night, that sweep? You can do like 4, if you're showing like on the clock, 4, sweep to 7. Just that sort of push. And again, there are other ways of doing this. I'm just showing the, the one that is the most useful. Now here, 15 minutes and half an hour, there's a little shortcut, and I just want to show you on the clock face. 15 minutes, quarter of an hour. So we go from noon to three. I waited for 15 minutes. Again, it's that sweep, right? You can also do half hour. It's a little shortcut. You can sign 30 minutes. Half hour eh, is awkward. It's not as clear. Half hour. We won't do 45 minutes. These are really easy. 15 minutes, half hour. There we go, half hour. Approximately. Eh, about time 2.30. Approximately. Mm -hmm. um, all day, all night, 24-7 all day, all night, on time, Boop. on the dot, right on the nose. Um, oversleep, the sun rose. Here's the horizon, the sun rose, I overslept. Um, next, so if we've got a sequence of things, next time, next time, next semester, next year, Next time. Um, we didn't really do one year in the future and one year in the past. Um, year, future, year, past. There are some shortcuts we can do, and I'm going to show them to you now. We'll dwell on them a little bit more later. Next year, so one year, future. So notice it's future, we're just adding in the one. annual and the reason i'm showing you these is to show how we tend they tend to visually match what we're talking about annual every year next year and next year and next year last last year right so it's one year into the past one year into the past two years ago every two years we vote for president every four years okay um Early and late. Now we know late, right? It can be one, it can be multiple. He's not here yet, he's late, right? Late. Um, early, go over your watch with your middle finger nail, early. Don't do it down, this means naked. This means, you know, the clothing came off. We're seeing the naked flesh, early, early. So we're gonna go over the watch with the middle finger. Um, Conversation starter five. I may add some shorter videos in here if we find things need to be clarified, but for right now, it's pretty simple. And then in class, we can discuss stuff like this or morning, are you a morning person or night person? Someone shows up, blah, 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 whatever. We'll get into more interesting things. And then I'm going to try to learn, try to add all of the vocab from, um, from the chapter into the PowerPoint so it's easy to go over. We've got the lists, but I think this is a good place. And if you go through, they're usually in order. Um, and they're pretty good about like putting one to five years, one to five years ago, 
one to five years ago past, one to five years ago future. So breaking all of them down. So just go through them and make sure you can do each of them, sort of make a checklist. Um, a lot of these you can go look in the um, uh, what's the sign section on Canvas, and it will give you the specifics. And again, if there are variations on these, uh, I'll try to give you the most common one, but there are always, always some variations. Boom, boom, boom. Get it. Okay. This, these are the kinds of things that bug me. Period goes at the end there. Okay. So that's 5.1. Each of these chapters has a ton of vocab. And I, and a lot of vocab is just practicing variations on one theme. So uh, practicing them on your own is tough. I will say if we can in class, try to find a partner or a group of people that you kind of gel with um, so that you have someone that you can practice back and forth, even if it's using video chat and sending a video to each other and just practicing things or trying them. Um, the more interaction you get, the easier these will be to pick up. Doing it on your own, it's very rare that that works well. Okay, cool. So that's 5.1.